All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning to North Greensboro Church of God Sunday School lesson today, January 9th, 2022. Uh, as most of you guys know, we are precaution uh, today and uh, not having anybody here in the building with us. Uh, unless somebody does surprisingly show up, then we will definitely have them here, here at, at their own risk. But uh, everything is okay, and um, we're just doing this out of precaution today. So we hope that you'll get a blessing out of the Sunday School Hour as well as the preaching hour during the 11 o'clock service. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, before we get started, we do have some prayer requests. Uh, folks that's uh, lost loved ones by way of death, we want to continue to remember uh, Sister Debbie Spall and her family uh, in the loss of her dad. Also, um, Sister Lisa Johnson's family in the loss of her. Um, Which we'll be doing this service. We'll be doing the service Saturday. this coming Saturday on the 15th at one o'clock. So uh, remember that, North Greensboro folks, if you want to be here, uh, it'll be this Saturday, the 15th at one o'clock. We will remember, uh, be remembering her at that time. So remember her husband uh, and children uh, and grandchildren and uh, those loved ones that was left behind to uh, carry on her legacy. Um, also uh, remember we've got Sister Norma Sister Norma Mills' daughter, Teresa, will be having surgery tomorrow, so let's remember her in prayer. Um, anyone else, Brother Coble, that you can think of? Uh, let's continue to pray for the Duncans. Um, yes. Let's also remember in prayer Pastor Randall Phillips of the Burnsville Church. He's right. got COVID. Yes. Um, Kenny Braswell, as he's recovering from it. Um, several other pastors in the state have it, so let's pray for them. Right, amen. Yes. Um, amen. Anything else, Jenna? You got anything, young people, to message you this week for prayer? Victoria. Okay, one of our uh, old nurses for Noah uh, requested prayer last night, so uh, let's remember her in prayer. Also, a young man in Virginia uh, lost a uh, friend, a loved one, uh, the other night, so he would ask us to remember him in prayer. His name is Mitchell. Uh, and God knows uh, that family there. Um, trying to think of anything else that's come by. I think that's it. I've not saw anything else that I can think of on social media. So uh, a lot of people are hurting these days. A lot of people are going through stuff. But I'm glad that we still serve a God that is still in control. We still serve a God, as I was listening to a pastor in, in Pennsylvania this morning, we still serve a God that's still in the healing business, still in the saving business, still on the throne. Amen. So um, let's uh, take these requests to the Lord in prayer. Uh, and of course, remember each other this week uh, that everything would be well. Amen. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, God, for your love, for your mercy. God, for just waking us up this morning. God, starting us on our way. Lord, we thank you for that, God, today, and I pray, God, that you would touch us each one. God, we pray that you would pour out your spirit, God, Lord, among us, God, here at the church today, God. We know it's just the pastoral family, but God, I pray that you would just touch and anoint us, God, as we share, Lord, from the word of God, uh, Lord, as uh, Jenna uh, leads us in worship, as I sing, and as Bill preaches, uh, Father, we just pray, God, that your will would be done. God, that you would get all the honor and all the glory out of everything, God, that we do here today. Bless those, God, that are watching by way of Facebook, maybe on the phone line. However, God, whenever they see this, Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch them today. God, touch our church family, God, that's battling, Lord, the loss of loved ones, God. By way of death, God, we pray that you would comfort their hearts, God like only you can, God. Lord, we pray, God, for those, Lord, that's battling COVID, God, pastor friends, uh, Lord, and other uh, people, God, that's battling it, Lord. We pray, God, that you would just give them the strength, God, that they need to overcome this sickness, God. And, Lord, we're thankful, God, for what Brother uh, Danny Duncan has been able to do this week. God, how that you've blessed him to uh, get some exercise in and lift weights and uh, do a game time last night and uh, God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for how you're touching Brother Danny. 
And God, we pray your hand continue to be upon him and his dad and mom. God, touch that Duncan family. Father, in Jesus' name, God, Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch Teresa, God, as well. Uh, Lord, tomorrow, God, as she has surgery, Father, I pray, God, that you would be with um, them and her, God. God, the doctor's hands, Lord, as they do this procedure, God. And, Lord, we pray, God, for Sister Norma, God, and her family, God, and the loss of their loved one as well, God. And uh, Brother Ronald uh, Vickery, God, who lost this sister, God, we pray that you would touch that family, God, in Jesus' name, God. And, Lord, we just thank you, God, and we praise your name, Lord, for all things, God. Touch and anoint today, and God will thank you and praise you, Lord, for all things, God. Lord, we, uh, God, also lift up Sister Rita uh, to you, Father God. You know, Lord God, what's going on with her, God. We pray that you would touch her breathing, touch her lungs, God, and, Lord, just be with her, Lord. Uh, as well as her sisters, God and brother, Lord, just touch each one of them, Father. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you. God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Always good to go to the Lord in prayer. Yes, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. If I forgot any of those, please forgive me. The Lord heard them all, knows them all, and uh, we just thank you for that time of prayer this morning. All right, our lesson today is entitled return of a wayward son now this scripture is very familiar because uh, if we think about the story of the prodigal son that's the way I've always heard it preached the story of the prodigal son and it is a story um, of a man who had two sons and one man uh, one of the sons uh, he chose to make a few wrong choices and uh, go the wrong way for a little while. But the good part is, is that he did come back. Amen. He came back home to the Father. Uh, anyway, I don't want to give too much of it away because we're going to go in and read this lesson this morning. Underneath our lesson, uh, and we are on page 26, for those of you who may be following along in your quarterly this morning, we are on page 26. Uh, underneath the title says, God's heart is to see lost people lovingly reconciled to Him. God's heart is to see lost people lovingly reconciled to Him. Now, God does not send anyone to hell. God does not uh, uh, send anyone to hell, although some people think that He does, but He does not. We send ourselves, or as an individual, you send yourself to hell if you don't accept Jesus as your personal Savior. So, let me read a couple of paragraphs out of my teacher cordially here, giving you uh, the lesson overview, as well as uh, a little bit of the historical and uh, literary background. All right, it says in the Gospel by Luke, and this, of course, lesson's coming out of Luke chapter 15, um, verses 11 through 32 are what's printed here in our quarterly. But anyway, in the Gospel by Luke, chapter 15, um, contains three parables of Jesus. You got the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. While all three of these paragraphs underscore God's love for people lost in sinful living and the joy that comes with their being saved from sin, this lesson is focused on the last and longest of these three parables called by many the story of the prodigal son. The selfish young man wasted his inheritance on sinful living. But as it turns out, the good father of this young man is the chief character in the story who reminds us of the character and goodness of God. Our Heavenly Father, whose will it is that no one should perish in sin. And then under the paragraph of the historical of this scripture, says the doctrine of the fatherhood of God is mentioned or implied a few times in the Old Testament, but it is fully revealed in the teachings of Jesus. In Jesus' parable about the prodigal son, the good father in the story clearly represents God the Father in relation to his wayward children who return home to him. The Apostle Paul said, We, or all humans, 
are the offspring or children of God. That is, we are, in the first place, children of God by creation. But we have been alienated from God by our sinfulness and need to be restored to a right relationship with him. We become God's restored children by faith in Christ to save us from sin. So aren't you thankful that God, like I said earlier, is still in the saving business, still in the reconciling business, and still letting those who, who turn their backs on him, he still lets them come back to the fold if they're willing to come back and change their life. All right, um, the lesson here in my Adore Quarterly Teacher book uh, wanted us to, and I, I wanted, well, I didn't get out the whiteboard or anything, but they wanted me to write the words God the Father on a board. Now, I wonder what comes to your mind when you think of the words God the Father. Uh, you know, I don't call my personal dad father here on earth because to me, and I never have done that, um, because to me, I only have one father, and that is the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so I refer to my dad in this fleshly body as dad or daddy um, because, um, well, I just do that. Now, if you call your father father, it's okay. I'm not going to you know, be mad at you or say you're wrong or anything like that. But um, when I think of the words God the Father, uh, that to me is just so, so powerful. You know, whether I'm praying, whether I'm testifying, whatever I'm doing, I'm lifting up God our Father. And um, But here uh, in my quarterly, it says, however, the word Father can mean different things to people. It's meaning often influenced by the personal experiences people have had or maybe have not had with their own fathers. For those blessed with good fathers... The fatherhood of God is likely reassure, reassuring. For all of us, God being like the good father in the lesson today should be reassuring God is the best father. And he is. He can be a father, a mother, a friend, a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, he can be just whatever we need him to be. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Noah, rub his leg for me, Jim. Um, all right, now we'll get into our lesson here. Our lesson is divided into three different categories today. We've got the degradation, degradation of wasteful living. And then we have the prudent return and joyful reception of the son and then we have the jealous spirit reproved wonder who's going to be in the jealous spirit category hold on just a second i gotta get me some water all right now and uh our golden text says, The father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. That's Luke chapter 15, verse 22. All right, let's look here at, at verses 11 through 16 or the verses that's printed here in our lesson on page 26. It says, And he said... A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. So naturally, here was a father who I guess already had his will made out, uh, who already knew what he wanted, you know, what he wanted each son to get. So the one says, you know, Father, I'll go ahead and take. Give, go ahead and give me what, what you've got for me. Let, me. let me see, you know, what you've got for me here. Um, and not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. 
and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him all right so in our lesson here the word see if i can read my own handwriting from a few days ago um the word degradation means being downgraded or um just you know being downgraded being um uh, you know being pushed down i guess you say um here on page 27 in our quarterly says jesus told a story about a wealthy father who had two sons apparently both of his sons were full-grown adults but the younger son took advantage of his adulthood by doing something very juvenile and foolish he demanded that his father give to him immediately the inheritance that was coming to him so he could leave home and be free from his father's discipline Far removed from the moral restraints of his father and brother, the prodigal or wasteful son eventually wasted all of his inheritance and fell into poverty. At the same time, a famine where he had chosen to live made it almost impossible for him to obtain gainful employment. Being desperate for food, he accepted employment as a herder or free range hogs of free range hogs we presume the prodigal son was a jew and if so he had been brought up to neither eat nor have any contact with hogs therefore for him herding hogs was an extremely downgrading or degrading occupation however he was so hungry he would fain or gladly have filled his belly with the carob, carob, pods, the hogs were fed because no one gave him any food. Yeah, I'm not real good at words. Jenna's sitting over there laughing at me. It's okay. Um, sometimes I pronounce words wrong, but it's okay. Right? Wrong, right. All right. So sinful living, uh, and I thought this was a good paragraph out of my teacher book. Sinful living always has consequences. But this is a fact sinners either do not consider before sinning or which they ignore, thinking the consequences will be far in the future or will not be too hard to bear. And, you know, in most cases when a person goes out to sin, that is so true. They don't think about the consequences. Now, what I've always taught Jenna for the last several years... Life is about choices mm -hmm. and the choices you make even at an early age, right. I mean, as young as eight, nine, 10 years old can affect you in the future. It may not be six months down the road. It may not be two years down the road, but eventually it will affect you somehow, some way. Now I do realize that sometimes we all make choices uh, we make choices sometimes without thinking, um, and then we pay for the consequences a little bit later. Um, but anyway, sinful living, anything you choose does have consequences. So this morning, if you don't get anything out of this lesson, please remember that your choices, the choices you make, has an impact on your life and will affect you some way down the road, whether it be good or bad. Now, back to the Sunday school. <laughs> the prodigal son chose to ignore the inevitable consequences of his sinful living. And when the consequences arrived, they were much worse than he had thought they could be. The wages or earned consequences of sin is death. But the gift of God, by grace, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The consequences of sin are earned by sinning while obtaining eternal life by trust in Jesus Christ is a gift freely given by grace to believers in Jesus Christ and I'm thankful that you know we can't 
We can't buy our salvation. We can't be good enough for our salvation. Hey, it's a totally free gift. And uh, we just got through celebrating Christmas. And, you know, you got a free gift from your loved ones. Or, uh, you know, maybe somebody that thinks a lot of you. And that was a free gift. And that's just as easy as salvation is. Just receiving that gift. Because God puts it out there. And it's for whosoever will. So, he puts it out there. And I, I am thankful for that. All right. <clears throat> Pastor, you got any comments on those first few verses there? As the young guy, he wanted to go ahead and get his inheritance mm -hmm. so he could go live his life. A lot of times, that's our attitude toward God is we want everything now. And, and then when God does move in our lives, we tend to leave Him instead of just remaining with Him. True. Yep. <clears throat> And uh, I, I think about in this in this particular instances here, um, when a parent, grandparent, whomever may pass away, and how the stuff may be divided, and um, that to me, I've seen it in a lot of families, it causes a lot of remorse, causes a lot of tension, a lot of arguing, um, and a lot of things that shouldn't be really. But uh, in this particular area, the young guy said, hey, Dad, you know, give me what's owed to me so I can go out and, you know, live it up, if you will. All right. Now, let's look at the next part of our lesson, uh, which is under the title, uh, Pretent Return and Joyful Reception. All right. It's page 26, verses 17 through 24 or what's here in our lesson. Uh, and when he came to himself, this is talking about the son, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. And I can't help but think about when a person, uh, when a person uh, returns back to Christ after living a life of whatever they've done. I believe that's what God does too. He he welcomes them back into the fold uh, and loves them just as much as he did before they ever left the fold. Um, but he, um, and that's what this father did to this son here. Um, the word penitent means feeling or showing sorrow and regret to having done wrong. So this is what the son was coming back and he was showing his regretfulness of you know, hey, Dad, I, I made a wrong choice here. I, I went out and I, I wanted to go out and do these things, and it was not the right thing to do. Um, and so the dad uh, welcomes him back, with I'm sure, with open arms. Uh, let's look here on page 27. Uh, the latter part uh, of the right paragraph says, Jesus said the prodigal son came to himself, which means he put away his wrong thinking and began right thinking. Repentance is basically a change of mind that brings about a change of direction in our living. Wrong thinking takes us away from God our Father, and right thinking brings us to God our Father. Repentance brought the prodigal son home. When the prodigal son came to himself, he resolved to go to his father and confess he had sinned against heaven and against God. 
and in the sight of his father and was no longer worthy to be his father's son. So the son realized that, hey, dad, I'm not, I'm not even worthy to be called your son anymore. But dad had other plans. Dad said, oh, but you are. However, the father ran to meet his son, had compassion on him and welcomed him, ignoring his son's confession that he was no longer worthy to be his father's son. The father was determined to fully restore his lost son to the family. No doubt Jesus intended this whole scenario to teach us how pleased God the father is to welcome home to himself any sinner who repents which is so true like i already said god welcomes anyone back to the fold or to the fold our lifeline says the story about the prodigal son and the good father is a lesson about the goodness mercy compassion and grace of god our father in heaven his love remains constant even for those who have strayed far from him. He is not willing that any should be lost. And God does not want anybody to be lost. He wants everyone that will come to him and be saved. Amen. All right. Uh, we got a paragraph here to read out of my teacher book, or like half a paragraph says he will not turn away anyone who repents and comes to him sincerely seeking forgiveness. He takes great pleasure and joy in restoring those who have been separated from him by sin and hurt by sin. We must never cease saying that God sent his son Jesus into the world to save sinners. This is the good news of the gospel. Amen? Amen? Amen. Good news of the gospel. He sent his son Jesus to die for each one that will receive him as Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Any comments on these verses here as the son is uh, coming back home and the father is restoring him back into the family? All right, if not, let's look at our last portion of the lesson, which is entitled in our Sunday school lesson. It is entitled, Jealous Spirit Reproved. Now, who in the world is going to be jealous? It's going to be the boy who stayed there by dad's side. Anyway, I think you can think about this in our everyday family life as well. Those who have siblings, um, well... Anyway, we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, let's look at the scripture. Verses 25 through 32 are what verses are printed here in our lesson. It says, Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might have married with my friends. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Aren't you glad that Jesus found you? Mm -hmm. Or that you found Jesus? I've heard it both ways. But I'm, I'm glad that I found him. I'm glad that I grew up in a God, godly home that taught me and uh, about Jesus, and uh, that I have never strayed from him. Uh, I've done some things and as growing up made some choices that maybe wasn't the right thing to do but I'm still thankful that he loved me even during those times alright let's look on page 28 under jealous spirit reproved <clears throat> it says when the prodigal son came home his older brother was where he often was in the field working when after another day of hard work he came home and found a celebration underway 
because his brother had returned. He was offended, became angry, and refused to participate in the celebration. He was jealous of all the attention being lavished on a brother who had wasted his father's wealth on sinful living. In answer to his older son's complaints, his father reminded him, Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is yours. The older son, it seems, had forgotten for the moment how privileged he was to be at home with his father. I mean, that older son was blessed because dad hadn't kicked him out of the house. I mean, dad could have said, hey, you go find you another place to live, but dad didn't do that. Dad, uh, you know, let him stay there with him. And also said, and also said the father, it was right to welcome home his younger brother because it was though he had been dead and was brought back to life. And he was, in fact, lost from the family for a while and had been found. I like the way dad refers to this as, as he, was, he was dead. He was, he was dead to the family. Uh, no doubt he probably didn't even stay in contact with dad the time he was away from him. Uh, so it was, it was probably uh, that dad was, you know, like he referred to it as, the son was lost. Uh, but is found. I like that. This good father reminded his older son that it is always right to do what is right in every situation. It is always right to welcome repentant sinners home to God. It is always right to celebrate those who are restored from a life of sinfulness to a right relationship with God. It is also right for us to celebrate the privilege and blessing of faithfulness to God. <clears throat> and then in my teacher book says, this part of the story is a reminder to us that God is so good, infinitely better than we are, definitely better than we are, that we can at times be tempted to be offended by his goodness. This may be especially so when the goodness of our Heavenly Father is extended to people we regard as completely unworthy of His goodness. However, we need to remember that even at our best, we are still unworthy of the goodness of God toward us. How many times have we saw, um, uh, how can we say this? How many times have you saw somebody be blessed like maybe over and over and over again, and yet you've got this other person over here, maybe yourself, and you're not getting blessed like that person's getting blessed. Well, we don't always understand those kind of things, do we? In this human nature, we don't. Um, but I'm thankful that God is, is no respecter of persons, and he can bless you or bless that other person as much as he's blessed those other folks. So, um, anyway... Let's look here at our lifeline. It says, if, like the older son in Jesus' parable, we have been faithful to our Heavenly Father for many years, we should count it such a privilege to be His faithful children. We will not take offense at His goodness to repentant sinners. It is far better to come to God early in life and to live for Him a lifetime than to stray from God and then return to Him. So I had rather, like I said earlier, I had rather live for God my whole life rather than taking a wrong turn and turning my back on God for a little while and then coming back. Um, I had just rather just live for Him fully. Uh, just a small paragraph here out of my Sunday school teacher book says, no person who has been faithful to God for a lifetime should be jealous of one who has strayed from God into a life of sinfulness, return to God, and then be greatly blessed by God. So we shouldn't be jealous, although our fleshly body is probably going to be jealous if someone has been away from God, comes back to God, and, you know, gets a blessing or whatever the case might be. Um and gets more blessed than others. All right, any comments on the lesson? 
If not, let me read our uh, little life-related learning story here uh, entitled, I Put Him There For You. It says, a few years ago, I was in Nashville, Tennessee for a meeting. It was late afternoon when it ended, and I wanted to drive the 168 miles back home. Rather than setting down to eat, I pulled into a McDonald's and brought, bought an ice cream cone to go. On the way back to the car, I saw him, one of the saddest looking men who you could imagine. He was standing by the entrance, staring into space. My first thought was, I should witness to this man. My second thought was, I can't take time to do this. I can't take the time now. I've got to get home before dark. I must confess I did what many believers do. I said a prayer for the man and got in my car for the return home. I put the car in reverse, and then I saw him in my side view mirror. At that moment, this thought came crashing into my spirit. I put him there for you. I knew then I could not drive away from this opportunity. That had to be the voice of the Lord speaking to my heart. I put the car in park and walked back across the parking lot. The man turned toward me and I said, This is a wonderful ice cream cone. Could I buy one for you? The man said, No, but I am hungry. I invited him into McDonald's and ordered a meal for him. I asked him if I could join him. And for the next 45 minutes, we had the most wonderful conversation. After getting to know the man, I was able to share with him my testimony and the message of salvation. He gave me permission to pray for him, and I did. I asked God to bless him and allow him to fully understand how to know Christ personally. When I got back into my car, the greatest joy flooded my soul. I had helped someone move closer to the Lord. That day, I experienced the joy of witnessing. When most people think of witnessing, they think of joy. The emotion it provokes in many is fear. What do I say? What if they reject me? There, these are real questions we have to wrestle with, but I have found when we finish the wrestling and surrender to God, we discover that sharing our faith is one of the most joyous producing activities we experience as followers of Jesus. So that man or person, yes, yeah, a man, Leonard Albert, you know, he didn't have to go back and, you know, go back and buy that man a meal and sit there with him for 45 minutes. He wanted to get home before dark. But then the Lord uh, pro uh, proposed him, you know, or brought in his spirit, I put him there for you. And how many times do we, um, um, we might feel the urge to pray for someone or to help someone or to bless them with a little money, whatever the case might be, and we don't do that. Well, we miss out on that blessing, number one, but you also never know what that might do for someone. So let's be in prayer, you know, and I, I do it prayerfully especially here in Greensboro, we have a lot of people that stand at stop uh, lights and uh, things like that, you know, saying they need money or saying they need a job or saying they need this, that, or the other. And prayerfully, prayerfully, um, help them if you feel impressed to, or if the Lord says give them a dollar, give them a dollar. Uh, I've heard some people say they they prepare snacks in their car and they'll just hand them a bag of snacks and that's that's a great idea too um, but anyway thank you so much for listening in today and I know we're going to finish up just a few minutes early but we'll be back at 11 o'clock for our morning worship service and pastor I'm going to go ahead and pray for you like we normally do um, let's get the oil and we'll pray Jenny you want to come over and help me pray and then I'll, I'll anoint us as well as we're leading in singing and singing. <clears throat> Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this another time, God, that you've given unto us, God, another Sunday, God, that we can gather together, Lord, in your house, God, to worship you, Father. 
Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch and anoint our pastor today. God, just move upon him, God. Lord, speak through him. God, the words that we need to hear today, and God, may we be mindful of it, Father God, and may you speak to our hearts, God, and those that will be watching or listening, God, uh, Lord, we pray, God, that you would speak to hearts today, and God, we'll just thank you and praise you, Lord, for all things, God. Lord, touch Sister Jenna today, God. Lord, we pray, God, as she is leading and singing, uh, God, that you would touch her today, Lord, in spirit and in truth, God. And, Lord, that she would be obedient, God, in what you would say through her, God, and to her, God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch her today. Touch me as well, Father God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just help us, God, that we would worship you today, God, in spirit and in truth. And, God, we thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all things, Lord. And we praise your name, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> 